Okay, people, we've got a show on communication to do here. Two, swing around and give me the wide shot. Is Science Guy in the set? Yeah. Okay, roll the opening credits. I said roll. It's in speed. Three, two, And stand by one. and take science. Bill Nye the Science Guy. is a property of matter. T minus seven seconds. the science guy. Brought to you by communication. Need we say more? No. Do you know what I'm thinking? I was thinking I've got to open the door. But you didn't know until I communicated it to you. See, animals like us communicate all the time. We do it, fish do it, birds do it. Communication is older than Native American dancing. It's as young as the most recent satellite signal. Communication is just... Amazing? Yeah, amazing. Hey, go ahead, uh, you take it from here. Thanks, and very nice job, by the way. Well said. When we communicate, we communicate information. Now, the only difference between information and noise or some random pattern is that information has an order or a sequence. Like when a bird sings, the notes are in order, like... <whistles> Same is true for us. Like here, a dog bites a man. <laughs> and now we'll reverse it and have a man bite a dog. It's different, but it's good. That is good. <laughs> See, the difference is in the order of the information. Now, take a look at this. It's our information board of science. And right now, it's blank. Now, it has things in a random pattern. There's not really any information. But watch. see it says no bicycles we can communicate with another member of our species without even seeing them see we can store information outside of our bodies communication is uh, it's it's amazing yeah amazing want to make a duck call it's easy all you need is a plastic straw first take a straw then flatten out the last few centimeters I mean really flatten it out you want a good crease. Then cut the flat end into a point like this. Stick this end in your mouth and blow really hard. If you get it right, the ducks will quack back. Try it. Hey Mario, what are you doing? I'm just checking some information I've stored outside my body. You mean this? It says, uh... Pot at matab, morph sevum sit as matab at pot morph deer. Ooh. Yeah, you see, Bill, we read from top to bottom, so this moves from bottom to top. And this mirror up here turns it around. It's how people on TV know what to say. Oh, so people like newscasters can take the information into their brains and say it right back out without really quite understanding what they're saying. The information is outside of their bodies. Something like that, Bill. Huh. Huh. Huh is frontwards or backwards the same. Huh. Got it, Bill. Huh. Bill. Huh. 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 What he's trying to say is that animals communicate by exchanging information. Oh, I couldn't have said it better myself. Many animals communicate by making sounds. For example, that's a happy dog. That's a dog uh, interacting with the neighbor's dog. That's a happy cat. Oh, that's a mad cat. <laughs> Woo. And that is a cow. It may not be a, it's a big cow.
I'm John Gorey. I'm a dolphin researcher here at the Living Seas at Epcot Center. And this is our dolphin keyboard. We're using this to try to teach dolphins how to communicate with us by teaching them to use a language. Uh, dolphins communicate with each other mostly by uh, whistling at each other and by their body motion, their, their, their body language, so to speak. However, we can't whistle like the dolphins do, and so what we did was we had to build a system that was totally new, but it was a, a system that both humans and dolphins could use to talk to each other about things that we're both doing together. The keyboard may seem a little funny. The, the words on here aren't like written words on a page. Instead, we have objects in these tubes that are the stand for the words in our language for the dolphins. And so we just talk to them about what we're going to do, and they talk to us about what they want to do. This is an early stage in the project, but the dolphins are trying to communicate with us. They do activate the symbols on the keyboard to try to tell us where they want to go or what they want to do, what objects they want to play with, and things like that. What we're trying to see is, if, is sometime in the future, when the dolphins learn how to use this, this keyboard better, if they can uh, use, uh, communicate with it by, in a, in a language-like way. We're in a wetland in southern Florida. Hear all those frogs? They're communicating with each other. They're male frogs trying to attract female frogs. I hear a, I guess a green tree frog, squirrel frog. Well, I think, I think it's a leopard frog and the southern toad. Man, it's wild. Ha! These guys, they're, they're, going, they're going nuts. Get your stored information here. Get your stored information that communicates. Oh, forget it. No one's listening. Information can be sent in little bits that are either off or on. Please consider the following. This is our communication board of science. And it has lights on it that are either off and on. Now, this is the letter E. We recognize it easily. And now it's the letter F. The only difference is those lights at the bottom. Now see, nothing's moving. It's just that lights are being turned on or off. On, off, off, ah, off. There we go. Now these lights are what we call bits of information. Now I'm going to make a sound, and sound travels in waves. You ready? 100 hertz. See, the waves seem to move across the screen, but nothing's moving. All we're doing is turning lights off or on, off or on, on or off, off or on. Now, this is what we call binary information, bits of information, binary bits of information. Binary means two, like two wheels on a bicycle. So in binary information, it's either off or on, off or on, off or on. Binary, binary bits of information. If we have enough binary bits, we can send almost any information we want. Woo! Binary. Thank you for joining me on... Consider the following. Important information can be stored by computers. Oh, hi. Just listening to one of my favorite songs on compact disc. A compact disc makes music from information. Yeah, a sequence of information. A compact disc is kind of like a sandwich with a layer of plastic, a layer of metal, and then the layer of plastic. Now, in the layer of metal, there are little indentations, little pits. And when we shine a laser light on it, a laser light somewhat like this one, it bounces off the pits, and we can read it as information, as bits of information, binary bits of information little pieces of information. So imagine this is the surface of a compact disc. And as the laser light shines on it, it sees light, dark, light, dark, dark, light. Like that. And it converts that into bits of information. And it converts that into music. Now, a compact disc doesn't just have to store music. You can store a dictionary or an encyclopedia or phone book, a video game, all kinds of stuff. Because a compact disc doesn't store music, it stores information. It's kind of cool. Stored information.
information? Mm, yes, stored information. Yeah, that's really interesting. Mm. Helps communicate uh, ideas and stuff. Yeah, thank you. That's great. Mm -hmm. What's, What's up, baby? Are you nice? Just chilling, huh? Chillin', huh? Hey, I'm flavoring how you rocked that show last night. Right, that's Friday. That's Pete. That was the lick. Word, it was live. What's the lick today, though? I'm trying to get something to eat. What you want to eat? Pizza is cool with me, but I'm sort of short. Sure? Yeah. I got your back. You got my back? No sweat. Word. Let's do yeah. this. Peace. Check it out. Communicating. That's what John and I are doing. A different form. It's called slang. We're talking about eating, having a good time, and now he rocked the show with his fresh dance moves. No, that's not right. <laughs> I wasn't dancing. I rocked my thing. You're bugging. MC, you're tripping. Uh, MC, you tripping? you're a dancer. Yo, all right, all right, joke's over. My me? fault. I got, got your back. Me, it's cool. Let's all right? No yeah. problem. Let's be out. Hey. Peace. Yes. So that's why information has to have a sequence or order when we communicate. Huh? Some people on TV oh, know what to beginning at start let's. <laughs> Action. When we communicate information, it can be images, smells, sounds, tastes, or things that we touch. They have to have an arrangement, a sequence, or an order. Without that, you just get a bunch of noise. Since, Since much, much make, make wooden, wooden things, things otherwise. otherwise. See? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the whole thing? Good. This is a great moment in communication. This has been another great moment in communication. A few thousand years ago, humans only communicated by word of mouth. We had to store all our information in our brains. But once humans learned to store information outside of their bodies, they started communicating nonstop. Oh. About 5,000 years ago in Egypt, the Egyptians had a way of storing information outside their body, uh, kind of like our alphabet but it was just pictures. It's called hieroglyphics. Egyptian hieroglyphics eventually made it to Greece, where they invented the alphabet. That's a word that comes from the first two letters of the Greek alphabet, alpha and beta. Alphabet, see? That's how we can have alphabet soup for lunch. Well, that reminds me, I gotta make a call. <laughs> so when people invented newspapers about 350 years ago, then many, many people could share the same information on the same day. All this information stored outside of their bodies. And pretty soon we had cities and nations and color advertising inserts in the Sunday paper. It was wild. And then there's information that we send over phone lines, like faxes of pictures and modems. Excuse me a second. Bill, meet me at the library. Good idea. Phone calls where you just talk. Libraries have books that hold the ideas of hundreds of thousands of people spanning thousands of years. And now, computers allow us to store a lot of information in a very small space. Our whole modern society depends on our ability to store information outside of our bodies. Human communication, it's, it's amazing. Taiko is a traditional Japanese art form. It goes back over 4,000 years. Traditionally, it was used for communications. Like, every village in Japan a long time ago had a drum, a big drum in the middle of the square. And village boundaries were measured by how far away you could hear your drum. And so when you couldn't hear it anymore, that means you had reached the end of your town. It was used to communicate during work for the fishermen on the sea. Their wives would beat out rhythms for them and also the people working in the mountains and in the fields. And uh, it was used in celebrations for harvests and whatnot. It was a part of everyday life. It was used for everything. 
and now people use it as an expression of cultural heritage. And so they communicate emotion, a feeling of pride, and those types of things. American Sign Language, uh, ASL, is based on ideas, not words. And one of the great things about American Sign Language is a lot of the signs are gestures that you'd recognize, like... Drink. Dinner. Or, uh... Popcorn. Yeah, or... More popcorn. Help! <laughs> hmm. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, do you know how to communicate to someone you like them without talking? How's that for communicating, hot shot? The most frustrating part about being deaf or uh, communi communicating with the hearing person is that when they refuse to try to understand them. But if I'm hearing people just don't understand, so he would just write it on a piece of paper. Expression is the key to ASL. You have to be able to show what you're trying to say. You have to, your emotion has to match what you're signing. Like your expression has to all come together. If you're happy about something, you smile. And if you're sad about something, you frown. That's all those are natural expression. the world's languages take us in the direction of communication. But not all the world's languages are written in the same direction. For example, Hebrew and Arabic are written from right to left, whereas English, French, and German are written from left to right. Chinese and Japanese are written from top to bottom, 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 top to bottom. Top to bottom. <laughs> Thanks. You can send a secret message to your friend if you make a code rule. It's easy. What I've done is taken two separate pieces of cardboard and pinned them together. I've numbered one through 10 on the bigger one and also put the alphabet. On the smaller one, I put some letters, some numbers, and some symbols. Make a second one exactly alike. This one's for your friend. Now, put your message in code with the code wheel. Baseball players communicate all the time, so they know what's coming up. They know what play to expect. Like the uh, batter in the third base coach will go through something like bunt, steal, hit and run. Sometimes they throw in a bunch of extra signs that don't mean anything, just to throw the other team off. And the catcher and the pitcher agree on every pitch before it's thrown, like fastball, curveball, or something else. He's out! Stop. One, uh, one word. Hit people in the chest with your finger. Wiggle your fingers in midair. No? Tumbleweed. Ducks quacking. Look, I'm not going to stand here all day, OK? Now, the word is communication. Now, say it's communication. <laughs> Communicate 
That's our show. Thanks for watching. If you'll excuse me, I've got just a little more communicating to do. Produced in association with the National Science Foundation.